uh, I'm very happy to see all our participants here. So I'm uh, I'm very pleased to announce as we Icarus team discussed previous to this uh, presentation that in our uh, the first one dedicated to one of the Icarus platforms and it is Topotech. Actually, Topotech is the youngest of Icarus platform, but it's uh, very, very speedy spread ahead. And it's very typical for many things that you will see from Alexander presentation. So it's our community platform. It was developed in the framework of one of the Creative Europe projects that Icarus participate. COP community is opportunity. But it, it's really uh, very much uh, uh, describe how Icarus operates. And that is that we try to start something that will be maintained and going on also after the project duration. And it will be upgraded with new activities and with new participants. So this is basically the idea of uh, this uh, community platform. I think that Alexander, who is uh, uh, who is the father of Topotech, from the idea, from the idea to the realization, will give you the spirit and and show you what is going on. And you will see from from his presentation uh, how one platform uh, go ahead from the idea in five years to the really. The, the real community platform, which was uh, upgraded and which going on in the direction that I think in the beginning we couldn't even imagine. So I'm also very happy that many of the potakers are here. I'm very happy that many of you who are interesting for starting Topotex are here. And I think that we could give you uh, some ideas for what type of activities and for all, what type of new events and new direction this platform can jointly go on. So this is short introduction from me. And I think that now Alexander can show you in the media stress what it is really about. OK, so thank you very much for attending. Thank you for your time. And hello to everybody. Um, well. Uh, Topotech is uh, something that was not invented to have a certain place on a certain market. It just uh, uh, came by accident, but um, I think it's, it's quite well accepted, as we see here in Austria, because it's located in Austria, where we started in Lower Austria. Uh, we have here 573 uh, municipalities in this county and uh, at the moment we have 205 uh, municipalities running a topotech so this is uh, about the half and um, so so it's starting to to uh, become a network here at home uh, but let's have a look at it so that we know what we are talking about um, just a short introduction before we start to have a closer look. Uh, first question should be, Topotec, what is it? Uh, I think we have two definitions for this, or even we can say these are two areas where it can be used. We can talk about technically, and we can talk about how it is used for the people outside. So it's sort of a social um, tool to use. And technically, it's a digital archive, or maybe better, it's a database. A digital archive, maybe not uh, to, to, to uh, a large extent, because it's not necessarily um, scientific. And I think this is um, what's uh, our USP somehow, that um, we have a lot of laymen working. And so we can say it's um, a first uh, rescue uh, for the material that might vanish somehow, uh, because you can't get into this with 
uh, with people working um, if you have to pay them. Uh, and so it started to become a tool for crowdsourcing that people bring their photographs, their videos and whatever. And it's, uh, it has become a citizen science platform. So let's keep these two um, areas in mind when we have a first look at it. Um, so I will open uh, the landing page that we have. Uh, because Topotech exists of, of course, such a landing page where you can see what's going on and uh, even where Topotechs already are existing. You just uh, click uh, to the next one. This is the first phase of Topotech and the second phase, and this is of course the most important uh, phase. This is a single Topotech itself. Uh, at the moment, uh, we can not really search over Topotec borders, but this will be possible this year. We had a lot of uh, preparation work to do this. Um, and so you can have the suggestions in the suggestion lists to find names, places, or objects, uh, wherever you want in these topotics. So how does it work? Uh, you can search for topotics on the map, of course, uh, with the pins here where topotics are located on the map. Uh, more easier it can be to, to, to find them in the lists. We have Germany, we have Estland, Finland, and so on. And um, then you click uh, some topotic. And uh, the one example I can show to you uh, because I like it very much to, to see what material should find its place here. This is a municipality north of Vienna. Here, here is Vienna, north of Vienna. Uh, we have uh, this uh, village here. It's called Spanberg. And uh, just an example out of normal life, how to look up things. I want to show you something uh, that I do not know how to find it. And so I remember this is somehow related with a person. I don't know his name, but he, he owned a strange car. This was a Mercedes um, I never seen when I was young uh, because it was such an estate car. Um, and this is the image. So I have a sort of hook mentally to find an image I've seen before. This is this strange car. We, we, we had this, of course, but we did not have this in form. This is very rare. So I remember this car. Now I see the guy. Ah, this is the Schneider Johann. Um, now I can remember. OK. And when I click on his name, uh, I get 19 entries on this person. So this is the original image I saw before. Uh, we have the place in the map. We have the place of the camera. We can look uh, where the edges of our photograph are located in the, in the map. And when going on here, you have him uh, here again, and so on and so on. And at last, I will find this object I wanted to show to you, but I didn't know how to search this. Now I see it's Rechnung. Um, that means there's listed uh, what uh, kind of food uh, was handed out to the people on um, such an event in 1963. So this is history of meals. This is history of payment. How much did... Uh, a small bread or, or a glass of wine or six liter of, of wine. What did these things cost in former days? So this was a typical way how to look up things in such a topotique. And when we have a closer look, I want to change to uh, the topotique I know better because this is the one I started with. Um, to show you how you can look up things, uh, not just by this example, but in general. Uh, 
on top of this uh, screen, we have some, we call it categories. So you can look up the images only, or you can say, I want to look up the videos only. So you can kind of sort it very roughly, uh, but of course, in this way, you can't find the entries um, you are searching for, but it's a sort of uh, selection. Uh, when you have all these categories uh, on, uh, then you can look up things in here. Let's see the, the history of uh, maybe um, what, what was in the 70s. This was this uh, Glockenhose. You know, these strange kind of trousers that were so 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 wide as the shoes were um, so we have such trousers here and i tagged only such trousers in these images and so you have such trousers to find here's somebody are ah, here yeah so you can sort this out and in fact it's it's very strange that uh, last week uh, there was an article of um, a lady who's uh, searching uh, oh she wrote an article uh, in on university in, in i think vienna uh, on the arrow how the icon of arrow evolved um uh, over the years where it comes from and how it was changed and funny that I tagged even these so I have Richtung's file uh, and out of 16,000 entries in this topotech I get 184 and when I and this is the second way we can search I shift these arrows on the timeline and in these images, well, there will be somewhere such a Richtungsfile. Here's one. Here's one. And we can see how such an arrow was shaped and designed in former years. Of course, this is definitely a detail, but I want just to point out that uh, you can use such a database for uh, small detail tagging as you want. Why is here an arrow? I think here, yes, here is an arrow again. I think this is one of the first Viennese images of uh, playing bottleneck guitar or bottleneck violin. Um, okay, so this is this, uh, the main way we can search up uh, content by our tags here, by our search terms, and we can list these search terms also, uh, if you want, if you run a topotech, you have the opportunity to create such lists with tags you often use. And um, you see how often such a search term is used just to show uh, the public what search terms you're using. Of course, not every search term can can be shown here the lists will be too long but you have to select but this is a mean of of, of sorting and uh, showing uh, uh, the visitors what they can find in such a topotech this is the first way to search the second way we had it already uh, to adjust the timeline here um, what you find in here is not from the first page with 100 entries. This is from the entire um, topotech um, with this name. So these are 1,375 entries just between 1929 and 36, for example. You can sort this, of course, by oldest or by entry date as you want. And uh, a third, opportunity we have to search for content is unless you have tagged um, the entries in the map you can look them up in the map so we have somewhere here the austrian state archive and when you want to see how was the surroundings here you get the entries that are tagged in the map in this area we have um, here highways and in former days it was quite uh, and um, these are the pictures we are uh, searching for this is the, the private material that um, is going to to 
to disappear uh, because people say nobody knows who this woman was so it's not interesting for them and we have to rescue these things because there's a lot of interesting details on such an image as for example here a railway line that went from Vienna to Bratislava and uh, such tiny things of course we we can highlight here but what i wanted to show is that we can look up by search terms we can look up by or sort or select by the timeline and we can search on the map um, and uh, these things um, are to keep in mind if you say we want to run such a topotech for any purpose if these are the 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 things we want to to look up um, the entries well um, looking back to our theory um, here is um, the question of course is when we look at these topotics already existing uh, who is it who runs such topotics? Uh, we have some private topotics. These are set up by people to document their family history, uh, but um, only a third of these are online. More are just used for, for private purposes, so they are not released uh, to the public. Um, and this is, I think, also an argument, what you load up in a topotech is not publicly shown. You can decide if you release the entry or you just need it for your own storage um, to, to thumb through and uh, to show it to friends, because you can give the password uh, to others that they can enter, but not the public. Then, of course, this is our main user group. These are the municipalities. Uh, and I think uh, this is um, a way to keep this material in mind and also in, in, in physically, because we have very few institutions who have the ability to physically collect these items and also uh, to make them accessible. Uh, and we think this only can happen um, with, with people doing this in, in their leisure time who are really interested in doing this work. And uh, we have, um, for example, in one project, we had 35 municipalities and they made, uh, um, in the first year, uh, 75 uh, items that they loaded up and they described, and uh, all this was from, from private people in this region. Um, and uh, when you have the municipalities, this is our philosophy. We say we want to make these private items public. And of course, this is a big question. When might private items be interesting to public? And who is the public? Um, in about every uh, workshop with the municipality, we discuss um, how far they might show the, the, the photographs of Third Reich. This, this is, uh, even today we talked about, uh, I talked with the mayor and he said, oh, we have a lot of such images and we have these buildings from, from 1938 with the flags on it. And what will the family uh, members say if they see that their father, grandfather and so on um, had these ornamentations on their building in these years? And this is a question that has to be discussed it's, uh, I think, a good opportunity to get it back in mind. And so we have a social process. This is important and not just to get a good archive or database, just to have some activities to talk with, uh, with the people outside. And so making private means twofold. It's 
it's the meaning of making things visible, but the, on the other hand, it's to bring this material in public hand. Uh, on the opposite, we have all these social media groups that are pretty nice to get into talk with people, but for long-term preservation or uh, as a long-term database, it's not usable and it's not really public because I always say my children who are permanently in internet, they do not know what Facebook is. So it's a question of uh, generation two. And of course, um, in a long-term thought, also it's interesting who should be uh, the right holder or even not the right holder when the rights stay as the people. We have problem of licensing in Austria. Uh, because of our mindset, it's not, not, not that far at the moment to, to give good license to the images. But who should be in charge to say, we want to show this? And I think this should be uh, some public institution. And so we have the municipalities to do this. Sometimes it's archives, sometimes it's museums, but mostly it's the, the municipality itself. Uh, when we think in regions, uh, we really have such uh, uh, topotec regions where topotecs are used as one basic uh, tool uh, for, for the project. Uh, they do history work uh, with the public and they use topotec as uh, the archive that really lasts uh, for a longer uh, it lasts uh, longer than the project lasts because these projects last uh, normally for three years and topotic is something this is set into the region. So Radka, do you have some um, examples uh, for, for region projects uh, that uh, we can show? Uh Yes, as we speak, I can ask you, please, if you can uh, uh, show the uh, Topotec uh, Medjimurje mm -hmm. mm -hmm. about. I think that it's better that you open it and I see the some of administrators are here with us today. So it's really a beautiful story from Croatia of one of our Topotecs, which is run uh, so Medjimurje is a region uh, on uh, Hungarian uh, border and it's run by two high schools uh, and they are for the years now for a few generations collecting material from the re region. It is completely done by children. Uh, so every generation uh, uh, collect materials from their home, from their elders, from their villages, from their places, around the stories. They use it in the uh, school program. They use it in uh, uh, various uh, uh, subjects, in history lessons, in Croatian lessons, in, in various other teams. So I think it's really very nice examples when uh, all community is in engaged. Topotec is the tool that engage all community around their local history and around various activities. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, said, as Alexander uh, give you a few examples from Austria, from Croatia that now has around 30 topotecs. We have various examples also who runs the topotec. This is schools, as I told you, museums, libraries, uh, historical association, uh, private people, uh, institutions. And we are also, uh, uh, we are also uh, got uh, uh, some uh, additional projects that use the Topotec as an international platform for going on in, in special way. So this is the create the ongoing Creative Europe project, uh, which is called They Live. 
and it's dedicated to documenting student lives all around Europe. So we use Topotech platform to collect materials from various uh, private and public institutions to run and to document student lives. And it's also inside the project, we made interviews with uh, former students, uh, actual students, and Topotech is the platform that was choose for uh, documenting student lives. Well, so uh, even another kind of, of users are associations. Um, for example, in Austria, we have uh, two, um, let's say, in, in, in the political spectrum, um, uh, divergent um, parties. Um, so we have in Austria, uh, let's see here, I go back to the main page, so I will find it here. It's institutional here, and uh, we have the evangelic church um, with the idea of collecting all the images from the parishes uh, to have them in one virtual archive. So they just collect them digitally and uh, it's important for them uh, to, to have all the, the people uh, serving in the institution uh, to, to be found again, uh, because they traveled between the places. And so you can find even this person, Zimmermann Bernhard, for example, on uh, three images here yeah, again, somewhere and so on. Bern Zimmermann here yeah, again. So this is uh, the Evangelische Kirche. And we also have um, uh, the, the youth organization uh, of the Socialist Party in Austria. And this is Kinderfreunde. And uh, they do the same. They say, uh, we want to get from different places all uh, Kinderzerinnerung. Sorry, this is a uh, wrong one. Uh, this is Österreich Kinderfreunde in Kinderfreunde. Here it is. Um, we changed even the color and the font uh, for this uh, topotek. And um, this is uh, funny because a lot of politicians now in the Socialist Party, uh, you can find here uh, in their childhood or in their youth days uh, when you uh, find somebody who's uh, now an important person, uh, you can find him or her in, in the former days. So uh, having here collected 3,700 uh, items, uh, the church collected, I think, what was it? 5,000 something items. This is quite a lot and uh, they're trying to digitize even their uh, archives and um, what they decide to show, uh, they release for the public or the other things that are not that important, they keep uh, in the back end. So maybe it's interesting for you to have a look at how a topotech works in the back end. So I can show you in a test uh, topotech uh, what's to do because it's not much. And uh, this is the difference uh, between topotech and uh, most of scientific archives because we are really low threshold. This might be helpful for certain reasons, but for other reasons, it's just not scientific enough. Um, maybe you need it, you can do it, but we do not have the um, uh, systematic uh, basis for this scientific work. Let's have a look uh, in one of these uh, back ends. It looks just like this. Um, we have six mandatory fields you have to fill in to publish. If you do not fill in every mandatory field, so you can't release, but you can store it. And all you have to do, you drag something into um, uh, the window, you say 
upload and then you get the images in here and this is what you have to do you have to write in a title for for this image uh, you have to tag at least one tag should be given so if you say this is a code uh, you can write code even in the image um, it's important to tag things uh, to find the image not, not only to describe the image because if you have not described it you wouldn't find the image of course um, we have two columns for tagging this means that we have a difference between important and less important items you tagged and so you can uh, look them up um, if you have uh, the random um, setting on, on the front page you, and you look for code, you will get the images where code is in the first column, for example. So you get the images with uh, visible codes and in, in the second part where the codes are somehow in the background. Uh, we have uh, a column where you can write uh, copy text um, because we do not want to combine this. Um, here you decide what people should find and here you can write your text. We do not use full text here because you, the systematic uh, won't be nice uh, for the visitors. Then we have here the, uh, the date, of course, you have to uh, write in when an uh, image was uh, taken. Um, we have uh, the marks on the timeline, first and second mark of a gray bar. You will find here between the timelines, you see here the gray bars. And when you, you say, I don't know when this image was taken. So it was between 60 and 65. So you get a gray line here and you can grab it um, with these two arrows as we seen before. Um, well, what's more to do, uh, you can locate uh, this image. How does this work? Here is already a location done. So I delete these. You even can do more than one uh, reference on the, on the map. Uh, what to do when this is empty? Uh, you just go to the map, uh, you can compare with the image, uh, where was it taken? Uh, uh, the area is, is set for your topo take, so you don't have to, to search from the ocean. And so then you can say, okay, a camera is here and you, you put in the points, the angle of the view from this photograph and you have it in the position. Uh, and then we have, um, Oh, sorry, I do this in English. So we have originator, owner, and copyright should be set, but cannot be a mandatory field because many people do not know uh, if a copyright is still running. Um, we have all these uh, orphan work uh, topic at the moment uh, that's discussed very much or in different countries, you know, you have different um, uh, time spans of, of license. You can give uh, whatever um, Creative Common uh, license here and you can say public should be able to download uh, the entry or not. Um, and then we have um, a column for additional information you can give. This is not limited. Even comment is not limited. And a memo column, all you write here is not published to the visitors, just for your memo in the back. And uh, what you write here as a question, this is something, this will appear uh, with this question mark and visitors can ask, uh, can, can answer these questions, but not into our database. This is only an email that goes to the uh, top of takers as we call them uh, per mail, they get the link uh, can jump into the admin and can add this information, but just as far as they they want. It's not uh, a public um, a pa participation here because you need to know who's working in um, in your topotech, and uh, you have to decide if this person 
uh, can work here. So if we get a call and somebody says, I want uh, to, to work in, in, in some topo tech as I got it this morning, I have to say I can't, I'm, I, I could, but I have not uh, the allowance of uh, these people who are responsible for the <laughs> topo tech. Well, I think it's quite easy uh, if you think about um, having a very smooth and quick workflow in such an archive. Um, you can use it for whatever you want. Uh, what we do not have is a thesaurus. Um, uh, would help sometimes, but in the general, I can say that most of our top takers would not have started with work if they knew that they have such strange uh, terms as transportation and clothing and social life and uh, I don't know what what's all in there um, but maybe sometime it might be helpful in the background that we have um, uh, in fact one of our problems is uh, in in tagging that um, our topo takers do not think in hierarchies they say um, I don't know German sausage dog or something but you never will find dog uh, because they don't think in hyperlinks this is a problem and this might be solved with an automatic thesaurus that could be in the background well this is um, how actually it works uh, for the workflow if if you run uh, such a topotic and uh, when having a look back to uh, who, who works in such topotics again, uh, we mentioned these leader projects um, who are now calling for um, a searchability across the single topotics. Um, we are working on this, this will happen uh, this year. Uh, but of course, because of not having a thesaurus, it's not a really smooth search because they will have different terms for maybe the same things. So names will work prettily, uh, easy to call objects also, but um, more difficult items, of course, should require more search processes by somebody who's searching it. But we have the lists uh, the, the autocomplete lists, the suggestion lists that you can find items in it. Uh, means when you want to search something, um, we uh, suggest uh, what you can find. Um, let's go to something else. When you um, say, for example, um, some, some short um, word, we start searching uh, on the front page from four letters or from four types and then uh, you can look uh, what where it's uh, used so even in combination and so this makes it easier to find things even they are not tagged this exactly <laughs> as they should be <laughs> Yes, coming back to, to our lists, uh, we have privates, we have municipalities, we have uh, these uh, regions, we have, as I showed before, these associations who say this is a, a tool to, to overlook all our possessions that are dislocated uh, somewhere and institutions, of course, too, uh, talking about archives and museums, um, it's a um, different approach. I think it's an approach of uh, a little, little bit of age that um, elder institution leaders say that uh, we do not want to show what we have. Um, this is more often in archives, less often in museums. Uh, but younger people say that uh, they want to show and uh, if they have a better presence in the web, 
um, they would be better recognized as institution itself. Uh, well, how to work, we had a look. Uh, sorry, this we did before. And uh, if you want to look it up, it's uh, a German um, address. Uh, we have topothek.at. We also use different endings for, for, for the uh, uh, single topotheks, uh, but our landing page is this one uh, with the German address in the ending. Well, this, I think, was a short entry into what Topotec is, how it is used, and how you could use it if you're interested in. And uh, from now on, I think it's up to your questions what I will tell you and Vladka. So, uh, are there any questions? Anybody wants to ask uh, Alexander something directly? You may also write in the chat if uh, you have uh, questions. Uh, Vladka, would you like to start uh, telling us uh, as, uh, something about uh, your experience with the Topotec, how it developed in uh, your uh, in your area? Maybe this can be helpful for someone to understand how to start this process? Yes, okay, maybe I hope it, it, this experience can, uh, can be useful to others. So for example, uh, in Croatia, as, uh, as Topotex start inside the co-project, as I said, the first five Topotex were made inside the project because the Croatian State Archives was one of the project partner. So the first five Topotex were started around the project. It was in majority of countries where the Topotex start. So after the projects, we approach our, uh, as Network of Icarus Croatia, we approach to other archives, museums, association, institutions, show what is done so people will get interesting. So we are helping them to start their own collections. Uh, we promote it in various uh, national projects and other activities, try to connect it with, with uh, some ongoing issues. So I'm very happy uh, to say that uh, actually in Croatia, Topotec is the biggest uh, uh, collaborative uh, platform so far. Many institutions have their own, of course, various platforms. But in the collaboration uh, uh, framework, this is the this is the biggest. So we are very proud on it, on it, and we are very proud that we really uh, got uh, various uh, various uh, administrators and various associates, as I said, from the school, uh, private organization, libraries, municipality communities, uh, many others. And then we also uh, we also ask our uh, other cooperants to join, and we help to spreading Topotex in Serbia, Bosnia, uh, other countries. And we really we really go, uh, running many activities around Topotec. For example, we have uh, two other projects that we were. Uh, that we were also involved in topotec activities in these other projects and uh, we somehow upgraded it for example we have the the traveling exhibition stories from archives that we ask uh, people who got material on topotec show with us uh, show us the story uh, behind some picture on some document and uh, how you find it or why is it interesting for you and it was very uh, good received so i think it can be really good experience that you can really start uh, in various way to to start it run and then you will just if you are active and you connect it with other activities and with your other cooperants this is really very good platform to involve people in, in this uh, uh, local history, in uh, sharing community stories, 
uh, to much appreciate uh, heritage institutions and things. So everything uh, we want to achieve as a glam community. So I think that the Patek shows up as really useful platforms, but somebody got a question here in the chat. I see, so maybe we can yeah. go to- Yeah, thank you, Vladka. I think uh, what you said is very interesting in the sense that uh, 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 from the digital, the uh, it goes back also to the uh, to the live activities of, uh, of an archive. And yes, we have now another uh, question in the chat from Bella Marjanovic. Uh, she has a question about uh, tags as the user manual shows that uh, tags can be connected into groups, but uh, she seems to have a problem in finding uh, finding this uh, the way to, to do that to work. Uh, in, is this uh, the same in every program? In uh, I suppose she she means in every platform. Um, I think that Alexander will know this is something from the manual. Yeah, it's very technical, so it's probably a question to Alexander. But I think that, that you can maybe Stella ask. I think that Tommy is somewhere here from Finland, mm -hmm. and they also have very useful uh, ex uh, experience with Opotec in rural communities. So it mm -hmm. is another part of the Europe. So maybe Tommy also can share with us some experience or maybe some of the involved topothecars that are also here. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that uh, maybe before, uh, earlier Alexander could, uh, could uh, say this also for all other, all other participants. Mm -hmm. Well, as I understood the question is, uh, if we can group uh, search terms, um, so I'm not quite sure if my answer is, is, is correct, uh, what you wanted to know. Um, uh, your example is kid plus kids, so singular and plural. Um, I think, yes, we can, uh, because we, uh, we uh, mark the, the, the borders for the search terms just with comma. You, you type a comma and everything that what's between two commas, this is a search term, quite easy. And when you want to write singular and plural in, into one search term, you, you, you can do it this way. And in the suggestion lists where it appears, when you start typing kid, uh, you get the search term kid plus kids. Uh, so if, if this is what you what you asked for mm -hmm. so then we i hope that the question was uh, okay ah uh, i asked because some people may search in singular form and won't get the files with the tags that have plural in them uh, yes um i think um we, we have to decide if we offer um, all, all forms or just a single form, because I think that uh, when you visit um, a search engine or whatever, um, you get used to, to try uh, what's, what will appear. And um, in our workshops, I recommend not to use plural terms. Uh, because you, it makes no difference when you have an alley uh, with a lot of trees and you tag it with uh, trees uh, and uh, then you have on the same road uh, maybe an image uh, with just one tree of all of them uh, because you, you, you came nearer to one tree um, to, to say tree but it's the same thing, um, the same object. So it, it's not, not necessarily so but uh, we suggest not to use plural terms for our topo takers. If you want to, of course, yes, you can group them into, into one tag that you write uh, three plus trees. And this is a search term. And when you look up tree, you get the suggestion in the list for the complete search terms. Even if you write the second part of it, trees, you also will see the suggestion and when you do it really in in, in this manner um, you you will find it more quickly um, and you have it combined into one search term so it's a good idea but 
I think for for many of us, uh, it will be hard to um, to keep it all through the top topic, but uh, I think it's a, a perfect way to do it. And it's possible. Okay, so uh, are there any more questions from uh, from some part? No more questions. So Alexandra said uh, already said uh, <laughs> everything. Uh, Alexander, uh, is there some um, particular success case uh, in uh, your uh, working experience with Topotex in this year that uh, uh, you could cite as um, an example, some place where there may be people started with some uh, some idea and then uh, found uh, much cooperation or particular cases? Oh yes, we, we, we have a lot of such uh, success stories and I think every single topotech might be a success story even when, when one person starts working to, to collect, to, to uh, uh, save all these things. Um, uh, of course, a, a very nice success story was this project north of Vienna uh, where a whole region uh, said that we want to implement topotechs in our project. Uh, and uh, they started um, within, I think, five, yes, five sessions uh, with the workshops and they started working. And this is now um, a regional institution uh, for historic search because it's, it's the largest collection of, of old uh, photographs that you can enter. Uh, and and uh, then they, they have texts, they have uh, their, their videos and so on. And of course, we have to be careful not to, to mix it up with um, scientific um, workflow. Uh, we have, I have to admit, we have problems because it's private work. We have problems in the scan quality. Um, and of course, we have uh, problems uh, with tagging. The tagging is not scientific. This you can add anytime you want afterwards. But if you have a bad scan that, in fact, and sometimes is not a scan of a photograph, but some uh, bad interpretation for, for mobile phones, uh, made by small scanners, then, then this is a problem. But I don't think this is a, a glass uh, that's um, half empty. For me, it's a glass that's, that's half full because we can add some water in, in, in case if we say, uh, I, I, we see your problems, please do it better. So I think it's important that the process is running, that they, they want to do it, and then we can improve. And um, well, um, so we must not be too, too angry about bad scans. We are also running behind and uh, shouting, please, please, please have a look at your scanner. And uh, we also see with younger generations um, now coming into the work groups, um, uh, quality is getting better. I think that Alexander wanted to point out that uh, in many in many places uh, people in the topotech was also the environment where they uh, learn how to deal with technologies, with uh, scanning, with editing materials, uh, with tagging materials, especially order generation or or some sm small municipalities or villages. So in many in many occasions, it was also uh, for people place where they learn something about uh, digital technology and the internet. I think that this is the also the case in in some places, and it also shows up as very useful platform for learning. And Alexander, uh, uh, maybe you can show examples. So since it's interactive, you ask the questions and. Uh, people send the answers who is on this picture when it's taken place and uh, it, this is also many 
features of topotex is uh, something that is also good for learning various uh, things as also uh, all these uh, uh, possibilities that alexander said in this uh, citizen science project alexander you had also some uh, rewards for this in austria as much as uh, we got rewards for the topotech platform itself as one of the best uh, cultural strategies in europe in 2020 if i'm not wrong so uh, this is all that is showing things that alexander said that it's very good uh, uh, platform not just to be mere repository or main storage but it's really a good platform for learning and uh, teaching new activities and involve people in many community activities uh, thank you Ratka, because this is the point i always forget to to show it's <laughs> not the archive itself it's it's the process you can start with it's it's uh, to get things in mind of people into education and uh, you have i always say it's not history what we necessarily have to do it's it's sort of remembrance and uh, when you take um, a picture of of somebody uh, who's who's on the gate post so this this image is interesting just for this this person and for, for the children of this person uh, because it's family history um, and even this is a function. And uh, all these processes, I think, are, are, are really important uh, to get into talk um, again and to, to have some new stuff for, for local history. Uh, in in uh, uh, Last week, uh, we had uh, a topo ticket. She said, I have um, a, a train ticket from 1902. I found this in, in, in the... Uh, in the boxes uh, on, on the rooftop of my house from, from the grandfather of my cousin, 1902. And uh, there's written on this ticket uh, where this guy went from to, this was, I think, two kilometers, just just tiny bit of, of, of such a railroad. And in all the chronicles, it's written that this railroad was opened in 1906, but it's printed 1902 on the ticket. So she, she tries now to find out what's correct. Is the ticket a wrong ticket because they had a wrong date at this machine? Or was this uh, railroad track, in fact, uh, opened uh, two years earlier, uh, four years earlier? So this brings people into investigation work because they are infected because this is a, a, a train ticket uh, in the family. This, this is not anonymous family because she knows this was one of my um, family members in 1902. And I think these processes uh, are so important. Uh, and uh, let's say archive database, this is fine to have, uh, but also to, to have the remembrance in mind of people. And we have several mayors who started uh, in the last weeks by themselves, because they said, I'm so interested in the history uh, of, my, of my village or town. I start with my own material and they drag new people into the groups to work on. So uh, this is really amazing what's, what's the mindset and, and how they can change mindset in people uh, in the aspects of, of local history. So thank you very much, Alexander. Uh, are there any more questions? Anybody wants uh, to ask something also about technical processes or just, uh... no? Well, if... Uh... Nobody is asking some, something. Uh, I think that uh, we can thank you both, Alexander and Vlaka. Alexander for the presentation and Vlaka for sharing uh, her own experiences for this uh, all this very interesting presentation. And we hope that uh, you all enjoyed them. And for those who are not familiar with uh, the Icarus community, we uh, want to invite you to join us on Tuesday, 22nd February at uh, uh, 1 p.m. We are having uh, the 
uh, Icarus Jurfix, which is uh, an event we have online uh, every two months, about every two months to uh, meet. And uh, for those who are not part of the community, it's a nice uh, way to get in touch with us and uh, to uh, know something more about uh, Icarus activities and projects that are running at, the, at this very moment. So then, uh, thank you very much for listening to us and for, for joining us. And uh, see you hopefully next time. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you, Stella. Goodbye. Bye.